I have waited all day long for the construction on my road to finish. Finally, I broke down and my sister just let me film in her room. And as soon as I started filming in here, the construction was finished. Literally, I... Whatever. Whatever. It's a vibe in here anyway, so we're just going to keep going with it. What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle if you have not met me already. A question that I get quite often in my personal life and online is a lot about my hair. I will get a lot of questions on how I maintain my blonde, how I keep my blonde bright, how I'm able to keep my hair so healthy, and so forth and so on. So I thought that in today's video I would dedicate the time to kind of explain a little bit of my hair history and then also share with you guys some tips and tricks on how to grow your hair out. I have gone through some shit <laughs> with it so basically I'm just going to share with you guys the ins and outs of it and my hair history and how to maintain and grow your hair out. So if that is something that resonates with you in any way, then just keep on watching and let's get into it. To start off, I want to share with you guys my hair history because I feel like a lot of the things that I have gone through are a big reason as to why I have the hair that I have today, why I chose this style, and kind of the routine and the patterns that I have alongside with being blonde, basically. My hair, I'll put a picture up of when it was natural. I was kind of like a medium blonde naturally. I was more on the brunette side, but being a level seven, I was able to either achieve a dark blonde or a lighter blonde or even darker if I wanted to. And no matter what, I'm in the medium spectrum of the natural hair level. I'm bougie, so of course I've always loved Gwen Stefani, just that like blonde shell bomb. I talk about the Playboy Bunny girls. I always love them, the girls next door. That was my vibe, okay? I've always been that way as long as I can remember. My dream was just to be platinum, essentially. Although my mom got her hair done a lot, I don't really think that she ever allowed my sister or I to experiment too much with hair, which in turn I think honestly made me want it even more. I think a big reason why I was so intrigued in cosmetology to begin with was because I always wanted to be blonde. I always wanted to know a lot about like lightning and just the blonde services in general, and I just was fascinated with the whole blonde bombshell culture. And I think that's also why I guess I pushed myself to really learn a lot about blonde. I would say my lightning journey on my end really started mostly in hair school and I would have like all my cosmetology friends just do highlights after highlights and I would just have them do as light and bright as they possibly could. I'm trying to remember exactly when my hair started going platinum but I know that Holly did my hair and that is kind of when things started to change from just a highlight service to going full-blown bleach out platinum and for a while I was doing silver hair which I'll post some pictures here and there I think also if you look back on my channel I even talked about my silver hair journey a little bit then although that video I will be honest, I was still new in cosmetology and didn't quite know what I was talking about just yet. But yeah, I have been silver platinum for quite some time before I was getting just routine highlights. When I started working at Ulta, that was when I really started playing around with, I guess, my style and the kind of different looks with hair. And that's when I kind of wanted to go for that like really boxy bob haircut. And I I'll be honest, I was obsessed with that look. With that being said, that I would say is kind of the evolution of my platinum blonde downfall. <laughs> it was during the time that I got bangs, which I loved bangs, don't get me wrong. That was a lot of fun, but I think the bangs kind of encouraged me to be further experimental with my hair. And I'll be honest, I know I say this all the time on my channel, my hair is very fine, very fragile. It just is not, unfortunately, the kind of hair that is able to be very heavily messed with. Like, experimenting basically is not what my hair wants. I was getting my roots done every four weeks, and even though it was done by a professional, no matter what, certain hair just can't take it. And although I was light enough to be blonde, naturally, I just wasn't 
my hair wasn't strong enough to be blonde. That blonde, I should say. My hair got fried off. It was nobody's fault really except for mine, just the fact that I was just overdoing, overdoing, and I had the resources and the stylists available to just have their hands on my hair all the time. It just couldn't take it anymore and just, it came off. <laughs> I had to basically chop it all off and start anew. I think at that time I just kept wanting to go shorter and shorter anyway, but really what was happening is the reason why I wanted to keep going shorter is because I could feel a difference in my hair and I just kind of subconsciously knew that uh, it was it was coming out. My hair is falling out. It was being fried off basically. I cut my hair the shortest that it has ever been and ever will be for the rest of my damn life. I swear to God, I'll never go that short again. I don't even have a lot of pictures that I can share with you guys just because that's how much I did not like it. I always said I liked boxy bobs, like very squared bobs, but I never liked rounded bobs and unfortunately that's just the way that it had to be cut in order to get my hair somewhat back from being fried. From there on, I was like, I can't do this anymore. But I still want to be blonde. I don't know. I've, it's been a constant struggle. I've always wanted to be blonde, so I won't ever let go of that mentality. But I definitely had to change what I was doing to it. I just had to basically do treatment after treatment. And I barely put heat on it. I had to get a silk pillowcase. I was taking biotin regularly. I was doing practically everything that I could to where I could still maintain a blonde but not have it fried anymore. I think I did the bleach outs for a little bit longer while I was trying to grow it out and then eventually everyone was like maybe you should just go back to doing highlights and that is kind of where I'm at today basically. Now what I do, in case anyone's wondering what I ask for or how I get my hair to look this blonde, I just have the girls do a full heavy highlight. With that being said, as you guys know, I was platinum blonde, so a lot of the reason why I was able to be so blonde on my ends is because I was platinum. Really, in order to maintain a blonde like this, you have to be doing it a lot. You have to be pulling through to your ends. You have to be in the salon chair for a very, very long time. Started off with highlights, then moved over to a bleach out, and then went back to highlights. And even going back to highlights from a bleach out was still a transition. There was a lot of situations where I had a huge line of demarcation where you could just see the roots even though I had them done. Long story short, that's all I've been doing for the last like year and a half I would say, almost two years now. It's just a full heavy highlight that has helped tremendously in growing out my hair. All these pieces around my face are finally starting to come back, all of them completely fried off at one point. I now finally feel like I can do a lot more with it than I had felt for a very long time. The first and foremost thing that I had to pretty much eliminate as much as possible was heat. Because if I knew that I wanted to grow out my hair, if you think about it, if you're putting heat on your hair constantly, all of the hair that you want to grow, eventually what will wind up happening is it just kind of will be fried towards the ends. I would only curl it. I never straightened it. And if I did want to curl it, it was like once every two weeks. That's how like freakish I went. I invested in a silk pillowcase, which helped tremendously. If you have a cotton pillowcase, sometimes it can snag the ends of your hair and cause breakage and damage as well. Then the other thing that I got accustomed to is no more brushing when it's wet at all. It will cause snapping and breakage as well. So I just completely exonate brushing. Honestly, when it was super short, I didn't have to brush it at all, but now I just only brush it when it's dry. The other thing I wanted to eliminate is the amount of products that I'm using. So I just went for straight basic shampoo and conditioner and then a dry shampoo here and there. I was trying to eliminate the amount of products that I use because I A, didn't want to have to wash my hair too much, and B, I didn't want any products to cause buildup or in turn make my hair feel a lot more crunchy, which would also make it feel more damaged. I was like in hair jail, you guys. It was terrible. Especially being a cosmetologist and like feeling other people's beautiful, luscious hair. It sucked. It really sucked. 
but more than anything I knew I wanted to stay blonde so I knew I had to do this for myself. Another thing that I started doing is lots of leave-in, deep conditioning masks, kind of all of that. Anything with hydration I was going after. Even if I felt like my shampoos or conditioners or masks weighed my hair down, I just felt like if I wanted to have healthy hair I would much rather have hair that felt weighed down but uh, silky versus dry, crunchy, brittle hair. I feel like the length wasn't growing back as much as the uh, bulk of it was, if that makes any sense. I felt like it, it grew out before it started growing down. I still was getting routine trims. I was just having them do kind of like baby trims in, a, in the meantime. If you want to grow your hair out, you still have to cut your hair. I feel like a lot of people don't understand this. You just don't want to overcut your hair, if that makes any sense. I would say the best way to go about that is get a haircut every season, which means four times a year. But those are kind of some tips and tricks that I have used in the past that have really helped me. Once again, this all depends on your hair type and texture to begin with, but all of this is kind of what led me to where I'm at now, which I'll be honest, is still not exactly where I want to be. My hair, like I said, is just very baby fragile no matter what. I'm just always, I guess, going to have not so nice hair. But if I wouldn't have been doing the things that I do for it now, uh, well, then and now, then I definitely feel like I would not have been able to even achieve this length. Now that I feel like I am kind of in a good flow, I am able to experiment more with styling and I'm able to use a couple different products now versus just like very heavy shampoos and conditioners for like repairment. So, now in this portion of the video, I'll kind of explain to you guys how I style my hair and really what I do nowadays with it. I do want to point out, I still don't put a lot of heat on my hair. I probably will never put a lot of heat on my hair ever again just because my hair just can't handle it. It smells fried, it feels fried when I do too much curling in one week or anything like that. I do try to limit the heat to once or twice a week. And I'll show you guys what I like to do. I wound up curling it today, but honestly, the humidity has even made it like fall a little bit. So I would say even some of this is just my natural hair. Um, I wear my natural in a lot of my videos. So if you want to see my natural, just like look at whatever video you can find. I do have a few favorites that I'm going to share with you. And if you have fine hair, I feel like you guys will like these as well. This one I just recently started using because it's so such a big iron. Um, I normally would recommend like one inch, but honestly this is the biggest one that I had that would create more looser waves. I like curl and twist, if that makes any sense. So this one I will use, and on the temperature that I'll put it on is between the 330 and 380. I never go any higher than 380 on any of my irons, by the way. The other three that I love to use are just wands, which wands are honestly my favorite thing to curl my hair with. And um, I would say this is honestly my favorite one. This is just the Conair wand. I like it because of the way that the wand is shaped. I feel like for my hair type, since it is very fine, um, fine hair looks better with the kind of the inverted wand just because it goes thick and then comes down a little bit more thinner. These two I feel like give me the same kind of look when it comes to curls. I would say this is like my bombshell like supermodel curling wands. If I want to go for a nice clean uh, silky curl, I will use either the newbie wand that I've had for very long. Time. I think this is one inch as well and then I also have the bedhead TG. I very 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 rarely will straighten it but if I do the straightener that I like to use is just this very old sparkly chi. Those are pretty much all the heat tools that I will use nowadays and like I said I will limit it to once or twice a week the rest of the time I'm just letting my hair air dry. I like to use a very good heat protectant um, and I use the flexible style hot off the press Paul Mitchell heat protectant or I use the IGK Good Behavior. This one smells delicious. I absolutely love this and it leaves your hair feeling super silky and shiny. If I want to go a couple days without washing, which I do typically try to do just because I try to get as much natural oils kind of throughout my scalp as much as possible, I will just go ahead with a dry shampoo. The way 
super dry shampoo. This is just a aerosol dry shampoo that I will spray in and I'll just spray it in a couple different areas and then work it through. The last few items that I've been using that I feel like have been a huge game changer for me as well are just a few leave-in sprays. I've been using the Bumble and Bumble BB Glow which also is a thermal protectant. Also use the AG Cocoa Nut Milk Conditioning Spray. It's the same concept as the Bumble and Bumble but I don't think it's a heat protectant. To be honest I probably won't use this one after I'm finished but uh, like I said same concept I will always have a leave-in spray to put on my hair in my collection no matter what. So that is kind of the lowdown as far as all the products, all the styling, and how I get my hair done. Like I said, I was taking biotin for a very long time as well, but I no longer feel like I need to take that. I just make sure that my diet is uh, pretty reasonable and make sure I get all the key ingredients that your body needs. I will get to my full head of highlights probably uh, once every three months is what I like to go now. Like I said, I used to be getting it routine every four weeks, but I don't feel like my hair, A, needs it by four weeks, and B, I don't feel like my hair can take every four weeks to get it touched up. No matter what, if you want to maintain this type of blonde, you do want to be pretty consistent with it, just because otherwise, the longer that you wait and the longer the root that you have, the less chance you're going to be able to achieve that bright blonde. So that is all the updated ins and outs of my hair. That is how I was able to grow my hair out. And that is basically what I do to my hair daily. I feel like a lot of people have been wondering, especially lately, I guess because lately I've been really taking the time to style it out and stuff, so it's been a lot more noticeable. But ultimately, those are all the things that I do. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please be sure to leave them down below. If you are curious about the levels or anything, don't forget to check out my purple shampoo video. If you want, you can keep up with me on my Instagram. I will post that down below as well. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. With that being said, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.